Hey, what's up coders? I'm Coderius and today we will create characters with the Fantasy Heroes character editor made by Hippo. In case you missed it, I made another tutorial about the 4-directional character editor by the same publisher. Check out the link in the description. Short disclaimer to tell you that I received the Megapack for free in exchange of making this video. Anyway, I really like the style of the asset and I'm using the 4-directional editor in one of my projects. I will probably use this one in upcoming game jams. What about you? If you plan using this editor in your projects or in future game jams, let me know in the comment section. Hippo is a small indie team that has already released several assets on the Unity Asset Store. Worth to mention that the team is really responsive on Discord, so if you have any questions, the dev team will be happy to answer them. I'm using the Mega Pack in this video, but the logic is the same for the regular version. The Mega Pack just includes additional themes like the undead, science fiction, or military characters. Alright, once you have acquired the asset from the store, paid with your hard-earned money, let's create a new 2D project, and I see you in Unity! To import the asset, go to the Package Manager, under My Assets, download and install the Character Editor. The install takes a little while, and during these few minutes you can probably take a moment to like the video and subscribe to the channel as modest offering to the computer gods. Alright, the character editor works well with the built-in render pipeline, the universal render pipeline, also known as URP, and the relatively new URP 2D renderer. There is a small thing to change if you use the URP. In the project folder, open the command folder, and then in shaders, there is a file called Gray Paint. Open it in Visual Studio and find line 33. There is the light mode tag, change it to universal forward if you are using URP, or to universal 2D if you are using the 2D renderer. Save and close the file. We can take a moment to look at the project structure. In the main folder we have the main scenes. We will get to that shortly. Under command we find all the technical stuff like scripts, fonts, images, and under the extension names we find the different sprites and atlases as well as the test scene. Let's try it. The scene gives a brief overview of the animation and character movement. The scene is quite similar to the quick start scene in the main folder. Let's try that one. Same here, we can move the character around and generate random characters. There are also some basic instructions to get started with the editor. Let's now create characters. That's probably what you've been all waiting for. Open the Fantasy Hero scene and enter play mode. That's where the characters are eventually created. We can choose among a large selection of body parts and weapons to create unique characters. It's possible to preview and switch animations as well. Once we are happy with the character, we can create a prefab of the character to be used in the game later on. We can also save the configuration as a JSON file. It is then possible to import an existing character, either from an existing prefab or JSON file for further editing. So let's make a prefab with this one. Stop the game and enter play mode again. We can load and select the prefab we've just created. And great, it's loaded and we can keep editing it. Another cool feature is that we can preview the character in the test room. For that, we must include the test room in the build settings. Very easy, go to the file menu, under build settings, just drag and drop the test scene in the list. Now when we create a character and click test room, the character will be imported directly in the test room and we can try it out. Back to the project window, let's have a look at the prefab we have created. We can check the details by double clicking on it. First there is the usual transform and then the character component which includes all the sprites that are composing the character. An important component is the sprite collection which lists all the possible sprites for a given character. This will be useful for later. Then comes the layer manager to manage the rendering order of the different sprites and the last component is the character body sculptor, which allows you to change the height and the width of a character if you want to make a giant character for instance, or a slightly bigger character for heroes, or just to add some randomness. 
That's for the top parent game object. Further in the hierarchy we have the animation, which has the animated body parts, shadows and a projectile transform from which the projectiles are shot. We can open the animator controller to have a look at the animation logic. It works like that. First we define a state for each character. That's the lower animation layer. The animator supports different states like standing, walking, running and so forth. Once the character is in a specific state, we can trigger the action. The action is found in the upper layer, like melee attacks, reload animation, charge, casting, etc. When an action is triggered, the boolean field action is set to true, so we can manage the sequences and wait for the previous attack to be finished before starting the next one. We can see that if we run the quick start scene and look at the animator controller at the same time. This system allows to have the different actions being triggered in any state, which means that we can attack while standing or while running or jumping, which is really cool. Alright, now that we are familiar with the animator, we can have a look at the code. We are on Coderius after all. There are some examples in the quick start scene on the scripts. Let's start with the movement example. This script uses the character that is loaded into the scene and the character controller. This is the default controller from the Unity library. Have a look at the documentation, everything is explained in here. It is mainly used to move the character around and to check if the character is on the ground or not. If the controller is missing, we create one in the start menu and set the character to ready. In the update method, we just capture the player's input and pass it on to the move function just below. That's also where we can kill the character by pressing D, which triggers the death animation. In the move function, we first define the character speed on the X and the Y axis and then turn the character depending on the direction which is defined by the x-axis. After that we check if the character is grounded, which happens when the character is touching the ground collider. Based on these different parameters, we can set the state to run when the direction is different than zero, or let the character idling if the death animation is not playing. The state is changed by calling the setState function, with the state as parameter. The state can be selected from the character state enum. We can for instance change the parameter to character state walk if we want our character to walk instead of running. So if we play the game again, the character will now walk instead of running. The movement speed would have to be adjusted as well to match the animation. Now that we have set the state of the character, we can trigger actions. Let's open the attacking example script. Here quite simple as well. The action is triggered by calling the action directly on the character component. This will trigger the animation. To play the right animation, the equipped weapon is detected with a switch case so that the slash animation is played only when a sword is equipped. There is also an example function for the character to aim at the mouse cursor with quite some math in there. I'll let you have a look, or maybe you want to build your own function with this. There is also an example for characters using a bow and creating an arrow in the bow example script. Ok, the last script we will look at is the equipment example. In this one we will see how to change the character's equipment in real time. All the pieces of equipment are stored in the sprite collection we've seen earlier in the prefab. There is a collection for armor pieces, for helmets, for weapons, etc. To change the equipment it's very simple, we can call the function equip on the character and pass on a sprite from the collection as first argument, and the type of equipment as second argument. To unequip, just call the function unequip and the type of equipment that should be removed. The last topic I want to cover in this video is the Sprite Sheet Maker. In the Sprite Sheet Maker we can create, you guessed it, a Sprite Sheet. This is very useful if you wish to create your own animations and controller or to export the Sprite Sheet in another game engine. For that, just load the Sprite Sheet Maker scene and import the prefab created with the editor. From there, we can select the animation to be created with the lower animation or the state, as explained earlier, and the upper animation or the, the action. There are also other parameters like the camera size, the frame size, the frame per animation, screenshot interval and whether you would like to render the shadow or not. Then define the folder name where to save the animation and click capture. The animations are saved in the root folder of the project in a new folder sprite sheet with the name that was just defined earlier. It is then organized with the name of the lower and upper animation. Let's copy this new folder in our assets so we can see it in the project explorer. In any scene it's very easy to create an animation, just drag and drop all the sprites in the hierarchy and Unity will create an animation and an animator controller for you.
If we press play, we see the animation is playing. Awesome! Alright, it's already the end of this video, I hope it was helpful, don't forget to check out Hippo's page on the Asset Store if you're looking for very nice 2D assets. And before leaving, take a moment to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, keep coding and see you next time!